just an individual turn back to the question of this panel. Uh, how does sign language identity develop? And how does an individual's experiences, especially their language experiences and their participation in a linguistic community, contribute to the formation of that identity? So what you see here is a very, very oversimplified schematic of how uh, deaf identity or sign language identity might develop in uh, an American context. So you start out with a person who is deaf, they experience the deaf community and American Sign Language, the language of that community, and those experiences result in their identifying as an American deaf person. of identity development for a deaf individual, a hearing person who has deaf parents also experiences the deaf community and experiences American Sign Language, and as a result, they form a CODA identity. Now, I already talked about how that CODA identity can sort of be in different stages of emerging versus uh, more fully formed in the context of other CODAs and with a more conscious awareness of this shared experience. But the experience itself already shapes a CODA identity um, without the benefit of that shared experience as well. And that's what I think is also going on in the case of home So I'll lay that out in a little bit more detail now. a deaf home signer in Nicaragua who doesn't have the benefit of that linguistic community that seems so important to achieve this more mature cultural ideal of a deaf identity, how might they achieve that? to a deaf home signer in Nicaragua is relatively understudied in general. The study of adult home signers who continue using a home sign system into adulthood and for the rest of their lives um, is fairly limited. And the kinds of data we do have are really focused on the structures that they're able to develop linguistically. We don't have anything resembling ethnographic data available for home signers. 
And I want to be clear here that I am not a home signer. I am not a family member of a home signer. But uh, given what I and my colleagues have learned about the quality of their communication with their hearing family members, which is relatively poor, um, there are very few people who are well positioned to offer any sort of commentary on this. Uh, so I feel that um, given the lack of data available, that I would rather offer my imperfect perspective than have this uh, question of identity formation for home signers be completely unaddressed. one particular anecdote with you that I feel really embodies the assumptions that many people make about how deaf people achieve a deaf identity or a sign language identity. And one that really speaks to the importance of individual experience and the importance of context on the formation of an identity. The very first adult home signer who I worked with in Managua in 1996 um, was a very gregarious young man. Uh, he was 18 years old and um, at the time I was traveling with Anne Sankos, my good friend and colleague and collaborator, and we ran every possible elicitation task that we had with him. Uh, because we felt we had met him in the context of the deaf club in Managua, and it was the first time he had arrived there, and we just were very lucky that we happened to meet him then. And we assumed that once he got a taste of deaf culture and the Broadway Sign Language, he would immediately immerse himself in that community, and that he would no longer qualify as a home signer. So we had to do whatever testing we wanted to do with him right now, today. And that turned out not to be the case at all. He was not following the model of immediate immersion that's very common in the United States for deaf people who haven't felt that sense of belonging and that ease of communication that makes the deaf community so attractive to them once they discover it in early adulthood or sometimes later in adulthood. So I think the point that I want to make with that story is that we tend to assume that uh, deaf identity and deaf culture is a target, an uh, inevitable target, once contact has been made. But what I think that story about this home signer in Nicaragua shows is that a deaf identity, a sign language identity, emerges in different ways in different people and it has a strong re strongly related to their own experiences um, it turned out that home signer had a hard time understanding the people around him uh, he really didn't feel he understood that he was deaf that he was like them in some way but 
he was not motivated to give up his home sign system, which is fairly elaborate and complex. And uh, if you come to my presentation later this afternoon, you will get to see more of that. Um, he was very happy with his home sign and didn't feel that it was necessary to take on this new identity as a Nicaraguan sign language signer. So what are some of those forces shaping home sign identity? Clearly, it's shaped by their experience of deafness itself and the consequent and central and daily issue of communication that poses for them. Their identity is also going to be shaped by the visible and accessible aspects of the surrounding Spanish-speaking Nicaraguan culture, as that also shapes the identities of both deaf signing Nicaraguans as well as hearing Nicaraguans. Here I'd like to show you a few examples of those visible and accessible aspects of Nicaraguan culture. So to wrap up these ideas, um, and this position I, I've experienced myself of being a close outsider, both to the American deaf community as well as to these uh, home signers and their families. Um, I've shared with you some of the parallels that I see between my perspectives on each of these groups and the parallels as well between my own early emerging CODA identity with an emerging home sign identity that's really based on our own individual experiences without the benefit of participating in a community of people who has shared those experiences and who shares a language. In contrast to that mature, strong sign language identity, um, either a CODA identity or a deaf identity, that is based on interactions with others in the context of that community that shares a language. So I hope that these thoughts have given you some uh, interesting ideas of your own and I look forward to hearing more about them in the discussion.